So if there's one key word here at, at, at Gamescom with Microsoft, and you know, it's hard to pick one because there was a lot of different subjects at the press conference, but, but first party focus seems to sort of come to mind that you're, you're really showing a, a very diverse range of products here and, and games, both for this year and next year. Well, uh, as a first party person, I have to say I'm super proud of what we're doing with the portfolio for the next couple of years. Obviously, this holiday is incredible blockbuster with Halo 5, Gears of War Ultimate Edition, Forza Motorsport 6, Fable Legends coming to both uh, Windows 10 and to Xbox One, and of course, Rare Replay launching today. Um, and today was really also about showing that we plan to extend that promise of awesomeness into 2016 and beyond. So it was super fun to roll out the cast for Quantum Break, the uh, show off some of the cloud power and the results, destruction for Crackdown 3 and give the product a name finally, um, announce Killer Instinct Season 3 with uh, Rash from Battletoad and Beta today. And then um, just a little bit of a peek into Scalebound, Kamiya-san's uh, amazing, beautiful world. So super proud of the first party lineup, but you know, our third party partners are bringing it too. It was really great to have EA here today and show off FIFA 16, um, have uh, the ID at Xbox program with 30 games for Windows and 150 games for Xbox One. Of course, you know, we love Fallout, Rise of Tomb Raider. It just gets more intriguing every time that I see it. Can't wait to play that game. What I love is the fact that if you're an Xbox gamer now, the promise that we're really making to you is that you can just count on awesome content this holiday and well into the future. I think it's interesting because if this year is sort of like a lot of blockbusters coming out this semester, next year is going to be some oldies being brought back. You know, I hate to call Gears oldie, but you know, it's been away for a while and Crackdown has been away for a while. But then you got a lot of interesting new IPs. Can you tell us a little bit about sort of why you feel that this is a good time in the sort of the lifespan of Xbox One to bring out fresh ideas and brand new IPs? Well, the reason it's a good idea is because gamers tell us that they want it. So Quantum Break is a really interesting example. That's a game that, you know, Remedy is a, a company that's known for telling stories in unique and innovative ways. Quantum Break is a story told from two different perspectives. The interactive perspective is the good guy perspective. The linear perspective is the bad guy perspective. And Sam's vision was really to do both in a triple A way and make sure that um, one doesn't serve the other, that both kind of stand on their own as unique storylines. That's a mechanic that um, I think you could tell any story, but Remedy has a bunch of new stories to tell. Um, gamers love existing franchises. Crackdown is actually one of the games that we've had the most requests to bring back. And, but we didn't want to bring it back until we were sure we could really use what's special about Xbox, about the Microsoft Cloud, to reimagine the whole Crackdown experience from the ground up. Still give people that awesome vertical action that gamers love, but then use the power of the cloud to add this destruction element, which is totally over the top. Because you know, Crackdown was sort of part of that that initial launch on Xbox 360. Those those brand new titles, you know, it's a Mass Effect, Gears of War, Crackdown. That that was sort of part of that initial promise with 360, and now sort of you're, you're bringing it forward to this generation as well. But I gotta say, Scalebound is probably the game that blew me away most out of all the uh, all, all the games uh, shown. Scalebound is such a beautiful game. I feel uh, honored and privileged every day to get to work with Kamiya-san. This is a game that I think he's always wanted to make. You play Drew, you are uh, kind of a disenfranchised, uh, alienated teenager who through circumstances out of your control you get catapulted into this completely alien world populated with dragons, colorful enemies, and uh, giant um, creatures like the mantis that you saw today. And uh, although you don't really want to, you end up becoming bonded with Tuban, another dragon. And um, Tuban, I don't know if you noticed when Drew um, turned into dragon mode and he had one arm that was completely dragon. That's because of his bond with Tuban. And they end up throughout the course of the game building a really beautiful relationship. It's an incredibly deep game. It has huge action components, but it also has RPG elements. And I'm super excited to see where this one goes. Because that was something that surprised me a little bit all the numbers on screen I mean it, as an RPG fan that sort of got my thinking like hmm this is sort of like uh, you know 
best of two worlds, sort of Monster Hunter meets, you know, a Platinum Games action title. And also, you know, this sort of concept of, of controlling this larger character around as well by commanding it, sort of a lot of different ideas there. That's right. The moment-to-moment -moment action mechanics, just right now, they already feel incredibly solid, and they are so, so fun. And then uh, adding depth, over time, the more experience you acquire, the more skills you acquire, and you and your dragon become more bonded. And it just takes the universe to a whole new level. I think there are many, many, many stories to be told in Draconis. I think it's very interesting also, sort of, Microsoft has always had a lot of Japanese developers come to them, work on Xbox, but it feels like you've sort of evolved how you work with them and what you sort of have them bring out. You had Igarashi on stage, you had Kami on stage, and of course at E3 you had ReCore being shown for the first time, which is this sort of a East meets West collaboration anyway. So uh, how do you say that you've evolved that relationship with Japanese creatives? You know, the, uh, Japan remains the source of some incredible talent, skill, craftsmanship, passion, dedication, and Luckily, the industry itself has evolved. There are so many new ways to build games. We're working, uh, for instance, with ReCore. We're partnering both with Inafune-san and his company, Concept, and with Armature, the makers of Mega Man. And it's just such a great relationship. We're getting the best of both worlds. Um, I think Inafune-san is brilliant at creating characters and creating worlds. And he has very strong storytelling abilities. And then, obviously, um, Mark Pacini and the guys at Armature are fantastic with creating action and games that just get you addicted and keep you absolutely glued to the seat. And when you put those two together, you get something really special. I absolutely love working with Japanese game developers. I think um, they are uh, anxious, I think, to continue and extend their craft. And I think the more we work with developers from all over the world, the more inclusive our game portfolio becomes and the broader a set of gamers we appeal to. I can't wait to see more of ReCore, I gotta say. Uh, the big sort of capper at the end of the show was, was Halo Wars 2 being announced. Yep. 343 collaborating with one of the studios that, you know, at the pinnacle of, of strategy games, uh, yep. the Creative Assembly. Um, how did that sort of relationship come to be? Uh, well, I mean, when you're going to go back to an RTS for our most beloved um, IP and our most beloved franchise, of course you're going to go to the best in the industry to make that RTS. So it was a natural pair. But, you know, I mean, obviously with, with the Creative Assembly, you assume this sort of just gigantic scale of action. Is, is that something that we can sort of sort of, is, is that part of it, or, or are you still looking for that sort of console RTS feeling that, that Halo Wars had? Well, I think actually the best uh, thing that we can do to get you more information on that is hook you up with somebody at 343 who's here at the show, and they can give you more of a peek into it. What I can tell you is that Halo Wars has always been a franchise that has beautifully bridged the gap between PC and console. And I think you can have that epic scale and story of a console, but you can combine it with the addictive gameplay of a PC that keeps you coming back, not just day on day on day, but year on year on year. So many titles to talk about here. I, I don't really know where to go next. Uh, Gears 4, something that you're not showing here. There's a lot of, you're sort of, tactically placing these games when we get sort of get a little snippet of information here a little bit there but but 2016 certainly looks very exciting what what's your sort of what what are you most excited about in 2016 well uh, <laughs> i'm not allowed to choose between my children <laughs> oh come on you know, I have to say that uh, the more we get into Quantum Break, the more blown away I am by the quality of the minute-to-minute -minute gameplay. You saw a little bit of the actual gameplay mechanics. It's a typical Remedy game in that it combines these super frenetic paced uh, combat sequences with these scenes that you just want to stop and explore and immerse you. They're so incredibly detailed. You know, you find yourself in a shipyard and there are bolts on every table, you know, and there are rust stains on the things that are happening. And it's just such an immersive experience. And then combined with, this is really our first time working together with um, 
and by our first time I mean Remedy and my publishing team working with major talent in linear production and just finding what uh, using AAA talent allows you to do in terms of exposing story and, and creating a new experience. What you do in the interactive part of Quantum will impact what you see in the linear part of Quantum. And then you'll see tiebacks back into the interactive. So uh, I just think that's a whole new way to experience a game. And I'm super excited for it. It's one of those things where we were always curious, like, is it episodic? How is it going to work with the TV show and the game? It sort of feels like it's just one big package that you're getting in April, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. You'll play some interactive, and then it'll branch off into the linear part of the story, and you make a choice about what happens in the linear part of the story, and then that ties right back into the interactive. So the best way to experience Quantum Break is to take it as it's delivered. And, and, you know, because you have that strategy and then you have the seasonal strategy that you're employing with Killer Instinct. And as far as I know, Fable Legends is also going to have sort of a seasonal component. What, how do you sort of pick and choose what gets sort of that treatment or that? I mean, it, where does those decisions lie? I think different games lend themselves to delivery and experience in different ways. And we really want to listen to kind of the gameplay mechanic and to listen to fans of the game and give, uh, you know, combine the best value for the gamer with what's the best way to experience the game. Killer Instinct coming in seasons was really just a, a neat way to explore a new business model with a game that everybody loved. And with season three now, getting to bring in guest characters, I think uh, I'm super excited to see how people react to some of the new characters we have coming even after Rash. Oh, so, so season three is officially the guest season. No, we still have a couple of Killer Instinct characters that we need to deliver, but yeah, this is the first time we've ever had guest characters in as well. So we're actually expanding the Killer Instinct universe as well. All right, exciting. Uh, you know, I'd like to thank you for, for, for today. It's been a, a great show and I look forward to seeing what's next from Microsoft Game Studios. Thank you so much. I've had a great time talking to you. I hope you have a great show.